I think what probably really scares me is vulnerability and being truly vulnerable. It's so bizarre, I always think of this moment. It's one of those moments that could have completely changed your life, but when I first joined the SAS, we went into the Sergeant Major's office and there was, I think, three of us that passed selection and all went to this one squadron. I always wanted to go into Air Troop because being from the Parachute Regiment, it was like a natural progression to jump out of planes, and I didn't get it. I think the biggest thing that probably kept us all saying was you've got each other. I think for me mental health is a big important topic right now and we're coming to some sort of crisis because I, mean, I don't know the stats but suicide is the biggest killer of men. Yeah, It's been a, a bit of a wake-up call in, in terms of what I previously thought mental health was and you know I think as men especially men around my age 40 we probably grew up in an environment where men didn't speak about how they felt men didn't speak about the issues that they faced in life i've got a quarter of a million followers on instagram couldn't tell you how many of those i could reach out if i was in a dark moment how yeah. many people do you actually really know and you can really mm. count on in life and i think that's important i saw humanity at its worst So when you Google Jay Morton, a lot of the keywords that come up are around mental health. Mental health advocate, mental health strategies, mental health well-being, mental health support, resilience, advocacy, adversity. Why do you think that is? I think for me, you know, mental health is a big, important topic right now. And I think something that very recently has become, become something that is very important to myself and um, something that I probably dismissed for a long time and it's the whole male piece of you know put up shut up i don't yeah. know if that's the, the <laughs> I don't, maybe that's not the phrase but um you know i think as men especially men around my age um 40 um we probably grew up in an environment where men didn't speak about how they felt men didn't speak about the issues that they faced in life, men didn't speak about insecurities or, um, you know, the dark chatter that goes on in one's brain. Mm -hmm. um, and I think for a long time, men were just expected to be strong. And yeah. that was the vision that, that, um, that society or men felt society enforced on them. And probably still do. Yep. Um, yep. I still think there's a, a massive stigma that men should, you know, that a strong man is someone that, I don't know, looks the part or who has a attractive woman on his arm and someone who seems to have everything, you know, money, wealth, a fast car, um, a good job. And, you know, in reality, all those things are completely meaningless if you're not happy with yourself 100 percent. yeah um so yeah i think recently going on my own journey with with mental health and um you know i think mental health means something different for everyone right because yeah. i equally think that we're all on our own individual journeys and we're all on you know we're all on different parts of our life some of those parts don't bring problems and pain. And I think you're very lucky in life if you get away with no pain and no no problems because I think, you know, sooner or later there's going to be some level of pain or, you know. Yeah, it's got to be a rarity. Someone dies close to you, you know, mm. you go through um, a hard breakup or uh, career issues. It's um, It can all be quite challenging and I think, you know, everyone reacts to that differently. And it's been a, a, a bit of a wake up call in, in terms of what I previously thought mental health was. And, you know, if you'd have asked me, probably when we've recorded our first podcast, how do you keep your mental health in check? I'd have told you, you know, well, physical exercise and yeah, yeah. chatting with mates and, and all, that, um, all that kind of good stuff, like making mm -hmm. sure your career is good and stuff, which are all very important things. Um, but yeah, I, th I think there's, there's there's more more additions to that, and you know the biggest one for me is just speaking about it. I was going to say, so what's the difference from twelve months ago? Then it's virtually a, a year to the day that we recorded as well. So. Yeah, um, 
I guess it's being vulnerable about what is actually going on. Okay. Um, I'd say that, you know, staying physically healthy and, men- you know, staying physically healthy is, is really good for your mental health. I'd say being in a career that, being in a career that you enjoy is really good for your mental health. I'd say that, um, reading or engaging with friends is really good for your mental health. But I think when problems arise and um, pain arises, I think all those things are still really good. But what, it, what what's also really good is connecting with other individuals and speaking about that. Um, yeah, yeah I, I guess get into the root source of that pain and um, and and yeah, I guess being honest and open about it and. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and, and admitting that you're struggling or that you're finding something hard or, you know, that you've not felt happy for a few days or um, which are quite hard things to, to admit when you're someone that seems to have everything. Yeah, it's perception, isn't it? Yeah, massively. Yeah. And mm. and I don't know, I, I think you soon realise that everyone kind of has this stuff going on in some, some respects, some more than others. It was just, you would never call mental health, was it? I think like when I was growing up, it was it would there was depression mm. and the kind of labels that went with that, and then there wasn't anything else yeah. that I was aware of anyway. Yeah, yeah, it's a funny old world, isn't it? Because I think I sometimes think of it of like what we create as society, and we've created like we're, we're essentially you know advanced monkeys, right? Advanced chimps. That, <laughs> yeah. You know, we grew up in these tribes, and we grew up. Um, constantly surrounded by people and you know if you look if you read some of the books when the the agricultural boom happened Mm. that's when we you know when we learn how to to crop um, our food to a mass scale yeah that's when we kind of secluded ourselves from the rest of the tribe and we'd build walls around our compounds because other tribes could potentially steal what we had in terms of crops um and that's when we started going into these family units. And I think mm. as time's gone on, we've become less and less um, connected to each other as, as individuals, even though if you look on a technical scale, we're actually more connected. You know, WhatsApp and Instagram yeah, connects yeah. us way more, but that's not actual connection. No. Um, it's like, you know, I've got a quarter of a million followers on Instagram. You know, I... I couldn't tell you how many of those I could reach out if I was in a dark moment for help. Because right? how many do you, do you really know? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, how yeah. many people do you actually really know and you can really mm. count in life? Yeah. Um, and I think that's important. Um, but I think, yeah, as as this capitalist society that we've built, it's a it's a wonderful you know world that we've built, and we have this opportunity to travel and to um, become entrepreneurs and. Um, to write poetry and, and all this amazing stuff that the human human being can create, but ultimately, like it, it segregates us from actual real connection. Mm. Um, Is it that that book, um, Homo Sapiens? Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to say, you read yeah, that. I'm reading that at the moment. Yeah. It's a good book, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It is. It's phenomenal. Like the scale of it. Yeah, yeah. But it is. You know, you look at like. Um, I don't know, like mental health and suicide rates and mm. especially males. Yeah. Like you look at that now and it's, you know, dare I say it, we're coming to some sort of crisis because you look at, I mean, I don't know the stats, but suicide is the biggest killer of men. Yeah. I don't know the age groups, but it's pretty terrifying. Mm. Um, and yeah, I guess society and what we've built has a has a massive impact on that. Yeah, and, and I always think it, it's that the irony of social media being launched to actually connect people. Yeah, you could, and, and yes, like you say, technically we're more connected, but but in reality, it it brings people inwards, doesn't it? I mean, even even like reacting on your phone, it just brings you inward. Instead of zooming out, we're all we're all zooming in and becoming more inward looking. Yeah, it's weird. I, I, I was actually listening to a podcast the other day and it was, um, I was at a friend's house last night and um, she's got uh, children and 
you know, everyone's on their phone kind of thing and doing their own thing. And yeah. I was, I was listening to this podcast the other day and um, isn't it weird that we used to sit around as groups and sing collectively? Yeah. Probably when our parents were yeah. young, right? Their families would have sat around and sang together. Yeah. And now, like, I wouldn't, you know, the amount of self-consciousness that you'd feel singing mm. in front of someone anyway. Yeah. Yet you'd all just sit around in a circle and sing and then, you know, music was in, invented or mm. and then that was put onto some sort of tape or CD and then yeah. that yeah. kind of drew us away from coming together and singing collectively to listening to music on our own. Yeah. And yeah. then, I don't know, like, it's like even if you look at concerts, you know, years ago you had the lighter in the air, didn't That's you? That's right. And everyone was just so ingrained in the music and now it's, yeah. everyone's got their phone up recording the concert, that, you know, that they'll never... They'll never look back on no, that no. video footage, but in that moment, to share that. Share it on the story, and then and that's it. Yeah. I, I, I literally saw it the other day. Someone had, I can't remember the concert, but they literally, um, you know, shared a picture on one of our WhatsApp groups, and all you could see was the phones, and you just like, all oh, that, that that thing for, for being in the moment and, mm. and living in the moment, and it's like you're, you're living through your phone, through mm. the lens of your phone, and recording it, like you said, the chances of looking back at that. Yeah. And I think we're, we're all so disconnected from ourselves that we don't even realise that it's happening. Yeah, yeah. Which is the most yeah. bizarre thing because actually if you think about it, if you think about the concept of I'm at this concert with my best mate, we're watching a band that we love, yet I'm not going to be in the moment and enjoy that band with my best mate. I'm going to decide to pull my phone out, which is connected to a load of strangers, film it, never look at it ever again, and post it on Instagram to a load of strangers. <laughs> it sounds nuts, doesn't it? And Yeah, and yeah, I'm there with my best mate. Yeah. And not yeah. only that, right, that the song that you love the most... That's the one. Is the one that you yeah. record. And, and meanwhile, you're literally moving around, trying to see around everyone else's yeah. phones to get your phone in the best picture. Yeah, and then all yeah. you're recording is a sea of phones. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? I think it's time, you know, I'm slowly realising now, like I've never been a fan of social media. Um, I think I've, I've always said, you know, for me, you know, I was lucky to, to, to find some sort of public profile, which has been, been great, right? I've, mm. I've earned money from it. Um, I've found work from it. Um, it feeds into, you know, what I want to do in terms of like expeditions and travel and... yeah. And I'm grateful for that, but you know, I don't think it's good for us as a society. Um, and I've always said, you know, if if it comes to a point where I can come off social media, I'll come off social media and just not even have a profile. Yeah, I, and I totally get that. I would like it. It's 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 annoying in a way, isn't it, that it's so successful if you have a business, you're trying to promote something. Mm -hmm. And I really saw it like when I used to do host all of the live events with with Virgin Startup, and you'd literally put a post of who the guest is and, and the topics you're talking about, and you'd literally just see <laughs> tickets being sold, the cash coming yeah. in, and you're like, you can right. see. But I, I I wouldn't do it if it wasn't for for business. I have mm -hmm. no interest and and. It, it, it's funny, like when I go away, like I've been, just been snowboarding in, in February, I didn't share one thing on social media for a week yeah, because yeah, I'm yeah. like, I want to be yeah. in that moment. And yeah, you can take some photos of, you know, little videos of yeah. you and your mates wiping out and having a good laugh about that on a WhatsApp group, which I get is social media, but I'm not posting it to a load of strangers to look at that. Yeah. I'm like, this is just me and my mates and my family and... It's me in the mountains. Yeah, you know. there's something quite nice about that, isn't there? Yeah, just I love just it. actually like that doesn't even enter your brain to go, oh, this is an amazing sunset. I'm going to share on social media. Yeah, there's like something real nice in that. I've I've recently, um, yeah, I go through because again, right, it's that thing of doom scrolling. Yes, yeah, so I saw that yesterday, and I was like, I'd, I'd love that. Yeah, phrase. but we all yeah, do it. We all do it. Yeah, it's you know, no one's yeah. immune to it. Uh -uh. No matter how you know, big your IQ is, no matter what size your profile is, mm. everyone doom scrolls. Well, Social you, media is bigger might, than us. You might open it, and I literally found myself doing it yesterday. You, you suddenly go, oh, I need to check, 
you know, do you really need to check it in that moment? Probably yeah, not. But you go yeah. on, and before you know, I hadn't even checked the thing that I went on there to do. I was taking down some some rabbit hole, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you surface, don't you? Like 15, yeah. 20 minutes later, going, I'm never going to get that time back. And what's that doing <laughs> to our like uh, attention span, and you know, the ability to be able to just concentrate on something and yeah. focus on that one thing and do that one thing. Yeah. Whereas social media just spins your mind onto. So yeah, I, I've recently been going through bouts of just deleting it, deleting it off, um, off my phone. I've actually got someone that, um, that, that runs it for me. Yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll delete it for a week or even just if I'm working during the day, I'll delete it and then I might download it in the evening. Yeah. Um, but just being, I'll delete the app. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, but how am I to that? I feel like yeah. I'm an addict. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> I'm pouring all the booze into the kitchen it. sink. Yeah. I'm never, never drinking again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But that, I think that was the best when I had somebody, the, the way it used to work was I would literally just dump um, a load of like photos or videos every week and she would create the posts yeah. using, and, and I would leave little voice notes and mm -hmm. things like that. And you have a strategy mm -hmm. and I think that's when it worked best for me for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, tell me about, so, so mental health again, when you were in the military, mm -hmm. so SAS, parachute regiment, etc. Um, under, you know, extreme physical, mental stress mm -hmm. at times. What kind of mental health strategies did you have then? Were there such things? Um, there wasn't. I mean, there is. I mean, again, you, you're going back to kind of 2006, and I think mental health was new then. You yeah, know, no one really. Yeah. I don't even think the word existed. I don't think it did either. No. It was PTSD, mm. um, and no one really knew then. Well, if you do get PTSD, what happens? Um, I think the biggest thing that probably kept us all sane was you've got each other, and mm. you know we're all. I'd say you were closer to those people then than you are to most people now. So you'd finish a day and you'd just, you'd decompress, right? You'd just normalize everything and the brain would process everything and you'd just, you'd, you'd be good. And, um, and yeah, I think, you know, PTSD is, is there. Um, and I think there's, you know, after, after doing my own research into PTSD, I think there's a lot that goes into someone getting PTSD. I don't think it's just a, a simple case of you see something that's traumatic and then you get PTSD because, you know, we probably all experience something traumatic throughout our lives. Um, I think there's more that goes into that. You know, I, I always thought of the guys that, that really struggled from, from those tours and it was, mm -hmm. you know, they're not from the greatest of starts. Right. You know, yeah. they're probably struggling anyway from some broken relationship that they've got going on at home and um you know their parents weren't too good for them good to them growing up and they struggle with alcohol and drugs and um it all kind of you know we've got this bucket right of stress and if your bucket's pretty full at the mm. point you see that traumatic incident then the body can't deal with seeing that and it goes into you know whatever it goes into um the response that it has uh shuts down or, or whatever it does and that can cause ptsd and i think you know for the majority of the time if you if you're cool and you've got you know good life at home and a good upbringing and you can see you know many traumatic things and go to war and be perfectly fine um and then i think you know you you get some level of emotional shutdown as well which, um, yeah, you kind of switch off. I was going to say you become immune to a yeah. degree. Yeah, you yeah, You experience yeah. that yourself? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you become mm. kind of um, numb to what you're seeing um, or you get used to it, which, again, is it's a protective mechanism of your, yeah. your body and it's probably something that we've had for years and years because we've been at war for years and years. So yeah. You know, the brain knows to, to switch off and to, to get whatever is needed to be done, done and then and then carry on. And, and that's a, a great system that the body has. Mm. I think, you know, that can also have 
um, you know, if that remains in place, it could also be great, right? You don't get to experience yeah. many negative emotions. You don't get to you get to sail through a lot of um, what normal people go through. You know, what normal people would feel pain to go through or. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean that's got a shelf life in itself, right? And that's got to run out at some stage. Yeah. Um, and then you start feeling this flood of other emotions that you've not necessarily felt, which yeah, it's probably something similar to to what I'm going through now. Is you know certain incidents happen throughout your life, and it opens the floodgates to experience a lot of you know negative emo not negative emotions. I wouldn't call them negative emotions. They're just emotions, right? But mm -hmm probably a lot of emotions that you've not felt before and um, and you struggle to deal with those. Um, I think that's part of the the male thing is like, you know, we probably suppress a lot of our emotions and we probably suppress, we, we don't talk about it, we don't talk about it with other men, probably don't talk about it with our partners. Uh, we just suppress it because we're supposed to be these stoic yeah. animals and... Uh, I think sooner or later that can have a detrimental effect and when it does and you start to actually feel your emotions you're like what the fuck are these <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was, it, interesting I was chatting to a guy recently here um, Steve who owns uh, who's in the military he's now got a company called Leo Spikes and he had <coughs> he had been blown up by IEDs on three different occasions wow <laughs> and his son at this time I was talking to it's, it was that day was in his first week mm -hmm. at age 17 um, you know down training to become a Royal Marine and I was yeah. just like what kind of conversations do you have yeah. with yourself like how real yeah. do you do you do you make it um, it's a difficult one isn't it I mean you, you don't want to kind of curb that enthusiasm but equally and this is the career he's chosen, he wants to go on, but equally, if he's just seeing what you see on YouTube these days and video games and stuff, how, how real until he hits, I don't know. It's, it's a thing, yeah, I, I get that, but then I also go like, I had the most amazing career in life in the military, and I don't regret anything, you know, that's great. It, 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 it yeah. brought me so much to my life, like mm. so much, like in terms of growth, in terms of travel, in terms of adventure, in terms of setting up someone who was probably quite a an insecure, shy, uh, not cultured, just a an average boy, right? Coming out of a you know, coming out of a working man's town. Yeah, and it you know, developed me into someone who can, you know, speak in front of people and mm. communicate and, and understand body language and get my point across and all these skills that are more essential than, a, you know, a lot of the things that are studied in university. I travelled all over the world. I saw some incredible stuff. I saw some, you know, I saw humanity at its worst, which is equally a gift, right? Because I can't, I can't stop that. But seeing humanity is worse. There's, mm -hmm. is a gift in itself, and I equally go right. You've got this son now, who, it, who wants to join the Royal Marines, so he either goes and joins join, joins the Royal, Royal Marines. He, he goes off on this adventure. He travels the world. He, he may, meets some incredible people. He, you know, he, he's doing what he wants to do, or. He sits there on TikTok and goes to university and <laughs> Put like that. drinks and yeah. you know gets fat and you know then just leaves university and, and and gets an office job that has no relation to the degree that he got. He's in 40, 50 grand's worth of debt from the university. The only opportunity to travel is the the two three weeks holiday he gets per year, of, at which he goes to Ibiza with his mates, takes a load of drugs. Well, I'm signing up. I'm, I'm going to join the role. What's the age limit again? <laughs> you should be on the campaign, mate, to sell it. <laughs> Give me commission. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it, yeah it's yeah. one of those where, and I don't know, the, was it Stu, was it? The, the, the guy who owns a bike company? Steve. Steve. Yeah, yeah. You know, Steve probably thinks that as well, right? Mm. I don't know if the being blown up three times has given him a different perspective on life. And 
you know, we can't avoid pain in life, right? And yeah. I think, I think the pain can either crush us or it can make us better, and it's obviously made uh, Steve better. Yeah. Um, it's interesting, like, when I look at the demographic to who listens and watches this show and just from like the the dms i get and, and the emails and stuff uh, the audience is literally like 90 percent, 97 percent male um interestingly like split between the us and the uk which i kind of never saw coming especially on on youtube but a, a lot and and it's from like 16 years old you know up to you know up to mid 40s but a lot of the dms the emails i get are from young lads who equally follow the likes of yourself mm -hmm. when i when i see who they are on social media and stuff and they're kind of struggling with school kind of feel maybe a little bit misunderstood no one understands mm -hmm. them there um they're looking for some kind of outlet um and I can I can relate to that and maybe getting into a little bit of trouble because that was that was me you know and you don't want to kind of pin it on something but it was you know parents split up father moved back to moved back to Canada mum mm -hmm. moved us from England to Wales where you know didn't know anyone etc and um, you can see the, the the direction that you could end up in like friends end up you know in in jail doing drugs getting into you know real trouble and I you know got. I was no angel, got brought home a few times by the police and my mum's there, you know, kind of ruling us with a rod of iron, like a small Welsh woman on her own, me and my brother. Um, but interested to know, because as I say, a lot of these guys um, can see that they, they follow yourself and that. What advice would you give, and I know a little bit about, you know, your background in mm -hmm. Preston, wasn't it? Yeah. Lancashire, yeah, and, and what you were getting up to, et cetera. What, what kind of advice would you give? And you've kind of given some of it with what you said, yeah. different outlets, but interested to know, mate. That's, that's a good question. Um, I would... I would say... Yeah, without trying to sound cliche, I'd just say listen to actually what you want in life. Like have a good, solid listen to actually what what you want to do and what excites you. Mm. Um, which is hard being 16, right? Yeah. I had no idea. No, likewise. And again, I was... I don't think the school system set up for... Mm young i'm going to say young males because that's my experience but i don't think it's set up for young males you know we have so much testosterone and hormones and energy yet we're supposed to sit in a class being yeah. taught about algebra it's, <laughs> yeah. we should be out throwing stuff making fires you know interacting with with other males older males learning from them mm. um so yeah i'd say you know if you don't like school that's that's fine. There's there's a lot of things that you can do out there that have no relation to anything that you learned from school. Mm -hmm. um, f play sport, find something that means you interact with other other people, other men, whether that's rugby, whether that's football. Um, find something that that means that you meet up with people and 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 build a community. Um, look after yourself physically. If that's in sport, if that's through the gym, mm -hmm. start now. Um, <laughs> start investing in a pension. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Things they don't tell you in school. Because yeah. the sooner you do it, the more money you're going to have when you're older. Correct. Yeah. Even if it's hundred pound a month. Yeah. Just open. That's a pension. really good advice. Actually, I listened to was it Ramit Sethi on yeah. Dharma CEO, and I've just bought his book. I'll teach you to to become wealthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just like. That should because the the rewards, as you say, the earlier you start that are ridiculous. Yeah. But of course, you get your first bit of money, and the impulse is yeah. because you're being bombarded again on social media yeah. with buy this, buy this, buy this, is to spend it. Yeah. But if you can squirrel away some of it, like you say, it's massively gonna. I always say to life. everyone because joining the military, you get the pension. Yeah. It's not a good one. I left halfway through, so it's half a pension. But right. I started a pension as soon as I got out and. I was like, why didn't I start this when I was 18? Yeah. So start a pension, um, travel, get out of your town, go and live in another city, learn what it feels like to 
meet people and make friends and learn communication skills. Go travel on your own. Go and visit Brazil or Colombia or Africa. Mm. Learn about other cultures. Like that's a, a massive form of education. Put yourself out of your comfort zone. Um, and yeah, find something that at least you are interested in or that excites you in a very small amount because not, you know, mm. trying to find something that excites you when you're 16 is generally you know, probably not the thing that you want to make a career out of. <laughs> um, and just put you put put effort into it. Yeah. Just show up and, you know, commit to it to a certain amount of time. I love that. I, th I think that's great advice. There's, there's loads in there. And I think definitely the difficult bit, isn't it, is, is thinking about um, what you want to do because there is so much noise and especially if you've you've been brought up knowing nothing but social media and you're just looking at that to actually have time on your own mm. to think which again i think is a rarity these days whether you, you know yes you know meditation can help but equally just sitting quietly on your own without any distractions and, and just writing down all the things that yeah. light you up on a daily basis and it could be music it could be sport it could be like you say being being out in nature i mean we've taken some of these kids we brought along to our like morning morning swim and i was like yeah. massive respect it's like you know january pitch black yeah. like air temperature minus eight water temperature six degrees yeah. and it's just like, like good for you man yeah you know? completely agree i think i think equally like um like having role models yeah like having yeah. male role models as a, as a young lad is important and yeah. that was something the army gave me there was always someone to look up to do you know there was yeah. always uh someone older that you were like i really want a soldier like him or i like the way <laughs> he is outside of that it's like i, I think that's important um yeah that's great yeah um, i'm trying to think if there's anything else it'll come. yeah i just think yeah. you know get off social media get off tiktok get off instagram yeah because it's it's not good for you <laughs> it's not helpful and those people aren't real on there that you see anyway no and, <laughs> and that's what i mean it's like yeah. go and you know make friends and just you know, that's that's probably a, a massive skill oh, is to just make is. friends and learn yeah. how to make friends because, yeah. you know, you're not really making friends when you're playing Fortnite, sat on the Xbox at night. No. So, yeah, make friends and, and travel and I think all that stuff's important. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think it's massively important when I think back now to, to me, like the... the f we make new friends, but equally, like those friends that you say, if you could if you needed somebody in your, in your darkest hour who, who could you call on for me it, it, it's those oldest friends yeah. like a couple of couple of friends from school but the friends I, I made at uni as well because we were all just thrown in a house together because we'd all screwed up our A levels so we're all just <laughs> the, the dregs coming in at the, the last week you know all yeah. thrown in a house together and you just learn to get on the most diverse bunch of people that you never think you'd get on within yeah. a million years is me with my, my Guns N' Roses and Iron Maiden posters and there's the guy I'm sharing with who's got like the Smiths and the Cure and I'm looking at him with his cravat thinking really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Who thought we would get on? You know yeah, yeah I, I had a great chat with him at the weekend when I needed some advice about uh, you know in inverted commas opportunity and it's yeah. like trying to frame that but it's, it's, it's equally it's like if you look at if you look at how you make those connections right as in because we've all got friends, we've all got a lot of acquaintances, but you're right, it's like having those friends that you could call on if, you know, your parent passed away or, yeah. or whatever it was, or, mm. you know, you came out of a, a, trick, a, a difficult relationship. It's like those are the friends that you need. So if you look at how you build those relationships, you build it through sharing stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, shared experience. You build Absolutely. it through uh, either going through a difficult, going through a difficult time, but then that going through that difficult time you're forced to actually share with that other person stuff that is worrying you or is is um you know something that you feel insecure about or um you know you you want advice on and mm. you, you know you, you ask him for it or, or her for, for their advice and i think sharing that stuff and the, the more you can do that with someone the more you actually see who they are as a person and not just you know, Alex, the podcaster, 
yeah, entrepreneur. Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You see me as not Jay, the special forces guy who's climbed yeah. Everest. You see what they're yeah. actually like and what makes them happy and mm. what makes them sad and their struggles and, um, you know, the things that they, they're really proud of in their life. All these things that you don't see on a surface level on Instagram or TikTok. Not at all. And no, that's no. what, that's what the connection is, right? That's what, mm. that's how you make these friends is being, you know, vulnerable. Yeah. And actually yeah. sharing stuff with these people. And again, vulnerability, it's like you could be vulnerable to the wrong person at the same time and share something like that. And they just be like, you know, what are you going on about, mate? Like, <laughs> wasn't that bad, was it? Yeah. You know, so, yeah. you know, but instantly you've figured out that that person's not someone to share that stuff with. But the, the real people in your life are the ones that are, you know, they're going to be like, oh, mate, like, I, I hear you on that. Yeah. Like, that must have been tough. Yeah. Um, then if you remember, last year asked you what you were scared of on the podcast. Yeah. Do you remember what you said? Um, no. So unfulfilled potential. Mm. So interested to know, in the intervening 12 months, what do you think you've accomplished? What's changed in Jay's life? Um, unfulfilled potential. Because you were just off at the time, I think, to climb Everest or K2 or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably a lot of introspection. Um, yeah. I mean, unfulfilled potential scares me in a way. But yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, being probably quite honest it's you know it's not the be all and end all is it <laughs> you you miss out on a couple of things that like I said at the start weren't that important mm. um yeah I think you know I think what pro probably really scares me is vulnerability and being vulnerable like on it like truly vulnerable um mm. Which, again, men, we're not very good at. No, same. Yeah. <laughs> Across the board, yeah. yeah. Um, but what, what lights you up? Um, what are you most excited about now? Um, kind of looking back at, yeah, when we first chatted, we've obviously met each other for, for coffees and thrown ourselves in the sea a few times since, but, but what have you got now that, um, you know, from that introspection that you go, okay, this is phase two, phase three, phase four of my life, whatever you want to call mm. it, you, you know, relatively recently turned 40 as well. Yeah. So it, it is one of those, you know, landmarks where you you, you, you definitely kind of look back and join the dots in your life and then you just think, okay, so now what do I want to do? Mm. Yeah, I think um, actually getting real on what, what you want to do for the rest of your life because it's one of those marks where you're like, Jesus like this next thing might be the thing that I do for the rest of my life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm. and, and yeah what, what really lights me up and, and, and ignites my fire is, um, <laughs> there's a song there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Take that, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Do you know, I, I, I could leave all the Instagram stuff and, you know, working with brands and, um, I could leave all that in a heartbeat. What, what I, what I'm passionate about is, and what I've realized what I'm passionate about is exploration, adventure, mm. uh, travel. And I really enjoy taking people to, to those environments. And that's why I enjoyed the, you know, the, the 8,000 meter mountain stuff and Everest. And I enjoy being, I enjoy looking after people in those environments. Like I get a, a great sense of achievement and passion yeah. from that and I, I love just there's nothing more that I love than just being you know on the side of the Cumbu Ice Fall with a client and they're struggling and you know I'm there for them yeah I'm, I'm that person who's there for them uh to keep keep them safe and you, you're in the middle of nowhere you're not thinking about your next Instagram post <laughs> um you've no phone signal it's just you and him or her and yeah for me that's that's what I want to do and you know I've got a, a big passion for adventure and for the world and um, for how we kind of, I guess, leave the world in a 
or try to leave the world in a in a better place without sounding like some right righteous <laughs> P-R-I-C-K. Um, yeah, but I, I think for me, obviously, you know, being born into Preston and, and joining the military, when I joined the military, that sense of adventure that I got from being in the military and seeing different countries and Doesn't you know, never left exploring you. has never <laughs> left me, you know, and mm. I think I, I wouldn't, I would never have had that if I didn't go in the military. So I have a deep, sense of passion to almost show other people that that's the interesting thing right so if you you know said some of that advice you were giving and, and i wouldn't have thought of one of them but yeah 100 percent right is is leave your town yeah go somewhere else and if you had never left preston you yeah. never would have seen that and now that's your passion that's that's amazing isn't yeah. it that's a gift yeah and um it's so bizarre i always think of this moment it's one of those moments that could have completely changed your life. But when I first joined the SAS, we went into the Sergeant Major's office and there was, I think, three of us. Yeah, there was three of us that, that passed selection and all went to uh, this one squadron. And um, I always wanted to go into air troop because being from the parachute regiment, it was like a natural progression to jump out of planes. And um, I didn't get it. And I got the, the last troop in that moment that I wanted was mountain troop. And I got mountain troop. And I remember being so bummed out with it, like so pissed off. You know, I was just like, oh, mountain troop. Like I have no interest in climbing, doing any of that stuff. Ironically, in that moment that I hated, turned out to be something that I'm gonna do for the rest of my life. That's and nuts. something that I'm probably more passionate about than anything else. That's nuts, isn't it? Fates. Whatever yeah. it is, and that sliding doors moment that you literally have, yeah. like you know, you Butterfly think in one hand out the other, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, it, and I know you've just done um, a load of stuff the last couple of years with with Nims, mm -hmm. which again, most people listening to this podcast would have heard of or seen mm -hmm. on on Netflix. Um, how are you going to do more of what you're doing in the future then? Yeah, so um, working with Nims is, is incredible. Um, he's definitely crushing it. In, in the expedition world and high altitude world. Um, but yeah, I think getting towards the end of last year, I really wanted to just, I guess, put my focus away from the high altitude mountaineering, um, which I love and it's been, it's been great. But um, I really wanted to, I really like this idea of adventure and exploration and going to places that aren't necessarily um, where you'd normally go to. Um, more about the crowds like you look at Everest and how busy it is it kind of takes away the beauty of Everest in the moment so yeah trying to find these these locations that the less trodden locations and I think that's at its root exploration and um, so I, I set out to set my own expedition company towards the back end of last year and um, with with the intents and purposes of kind of covering you know water air land uh, okay. and uh, mountain similar to what you know the, the SAS is yeah that's cool and um, yeah they were going to be these kind of unique expeditions uh, so go to these locations where there's not necessarily people um, and yeah I started developing it um, working on my own and then yeah randomly I got I was on uh, a peak called Lobbyshire East last year with NIMS and one of the clients, Harper, um, his dad owns a, a company called Arxum, which um, is or want to be the, the biggest adventure company in the world and they're in the process of building these explorer vessels. Yeah, I've seen them. Yeah. They look very cool. They're, they're insane. <laughs> insane. Um, they've built They've got two so far, uh, and the top the top one, the eighty five, is you know it's all built from reusable materials. So I didn't know that. Okay, stainless steel, Very wood. Cool. Whereas if you look at the the luxury um, boat market, um, yeah. they're all built with plastic. Yeah, they're all falling apart. Yeah, like I've got friends that captain them, and half the time is spent repairing them. And right, so yeah, Jasper, the guy who owns uh, the founder of Arx and really had this vision to build these craft that could go anywhere 
you know, they're MCA Cat Zeros, which means you can literally go in any part of the sea, anywhere in the world, and just build these sustainable vessels that, um, yeah, could explore the world. And, and they can go extreme, like north, south. Go anywhere wow. in any ocean. And my vision to kind of, you know, at heart, he's an explorer. Yeah. Same as me. And um, with my vision to kind of bring people that aren't necessarily going to be natural explorers. So um, we're, we're talking about people that work in offices or uh, work for businesses, CEOs, um, people that aren't necessarily going to get out and go away for two weeks, you know, climbing a 6,000 metre mountain into Jikistan. Yeah. But how do we do it so that they would feel comfortable doing that? So, yeah, I mean, mm. um the trips at the minute that we're looking to launch with towards later on in the year is Tajikistan, so climbing a 6,000 metre mountain. So Tajikistan, you know, no one really goes there. It's, no, it's desolate, no. it's wilderness, but it's one of the most beautiful countries in the world. Mm. Um, incredible views, you know, employed, we're employing locals, so we'll have local porters, local cooks, local guides that will all assist us in climbing a 6,000 metre mountain. Um, we have uh, a, an overland trip in Kenya, so using the, the four by four vehicles and again we tie into conservation so we look at what the rangers charity are doing and what the the rangers um in kenya are doing so they look after the conservation areas for the, for the animals keep poachers out for us so my friends run run the, the charity for rangers um which provide basic welfare for the rangers you know the rangers are just picked from villages they do a small right. selection process but doesn't necessarily pay them a, a massive wage, so they don't have money to provide stuff like running trainers or uh, running shorts or um, weights for the gym. So right. the Four Rangers charity raises money to to provide that basic welfare, dentistry, um, med care. Um, so yeah, the, on our trip, I kind of I want to tie in with these guys. So you do a day training with the Rangers, you go out for a run with them in the morning, which is wicked because you just run through the. When I was out there at Christmas, you'd go out for a run and there'd be like lone buffalo trying to track you and they're <laughs> all singing and like clapping to like scare the buffalo off and there's like lone male bull elephants and stuff. So it's to pinch yourself you're alive and. Uh, yeah, like literally. real immersive kind mm. of Kenyan experience. Um, you know, you get to see see them train, you get to see that where, where they live um, and then we'd, we'd drive off to one of the well-known conservancy areas say Burana or um, one of those and where you get to see all the animals so you get to see lion you get to see uh rhino um giraffe you get to see all the you know elephant mm. um and then we'd head north into the wilderness where anything could happen um, <laughs> where it's you know it's less you're not going to see tourists in these four by fours yeah. taking a million pictures of all the animals it's going to be wilderness and mm. we might come across lion we might come across elephant um and we're going to be camping under the stars and amazing yeah i'm there i love africa i've spent Same. a lot of time in africa Same. um like Kruger, kruger and places like yeah. that like years ago before we did a trip at, at, at um over christmas and we stayed in watamu national park driving to the beach and uh it's the first time i've camped out in africa middle of this national park right next to this river and um i was sleeping in just a, a big mozzie net on the floor and uh i woke up in the middle of the night and could just hear these two male lions scrapping and i swear to god <laughs> i just saw my friend tom and, and so they had a, a tent uh, a roof tent and there's this torch just like shining around the camp and i like jumped up threw my shoes on like got out this mozzie net ran straight over to them i was like did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. And then this hippo, like a hippo, snuck up the river and was right next to us. You could hear it, like, moving around. You saw its footprint the next day. It was Like, you literally just hearing all of like this. 20 metres from where I was Shit. sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, quick fire round to finish, and then I want to ask you about um, this mental health charity yep. as well before we go. Um, okay, so quick fire round, five questions. What was the one thing you needed to do to screw it, just do it and get from where you were to where you are now? Oh, God. Um, 
it can be like a, a quality, it can be a person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can be any of those things, a physical thing. Yeah. Uh, I guess just stick into your decisions. Um, yeah, stick into your decisions. And when you make them and just making the best of what, I think there's a, there's a gain and a loss to everything, right? Yeah. Um, and you've almost got to forget about what the loss was and just stick to what you, the decision you made and crack on with it. And what was the one thing that you needed to take that if you hadn't taken that action, you wouldn't have got to where you were? So what was like the big domino that knocked over all the other dominoes? Mm. It's just, I guess, just action or, 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 I don't know, like not listening to, probably not listening to, yeah. I'm trying to think of like the big stuff that I did in life and like how it was all quite um, homogenous, if that's the word. All kind of just happened, but again, it doesn't all just kind of happen, right? There's, no. a, there's a reason you end up there, and I guess. Was it jo joining the military, for example? If you hadn't have done that, nothing else would have happened. He yeah. Or leaving the military, yeah. even I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do. Or going on SAS, who dares wins, or whatever. Yeah, it's it's a bizarre one. I think y you could say joining the military, you could say going on selection, you could say that moment that I turned up and ended up going to Mountain Troop instead of any of the mm. other troops. Um, Maybe that one, yeah. Deciding to climb Everest. I think there's a lot of them. Just uh, just having a bit of faith in what you want. Yeah. Um. Are you currently where you want to be? Oh, Jesus, he's a deep, aren't they? <laughs> um, I think that's the battle, isn't it? Of yeah. being, being happy with where you are. But equally, if you don't have a where you want to be, you will just stay where you are. Yeah. So I guess trying to balance them right, like I'm, I'm grateful for everything I've got in my life right now, but I still want to be somewhere. Mm. Um, so trying to manage the two is probably the answer. But you've also got, you know where you're headed now. Yeah, yeah, there's direction. Yeah. Um, and something that I want to invest in for the next, mm. you know, 10 plus years. Yeah. Which is good. Which is great. So many people never get that. No, no, no. no. I only got there in this last, yeah, decade. Yeah, since I was forty. Yeah, funnily yeah. enough, since I left Virgin at age thirty-nine. Yeah, know? and that, I think that fluctuates, right? Like yeah, what you and, want and it now did. isn't the same in five yeah. years and ten years. And yeah, and most I would say ninety-nine point nine percent of people that I've asked that question to, there's only a couple who've said that they're where they want to be. Yeah, you know. Yeah, no matter which how, which might change in six months. Which might change again. <laughs> Absolutely. It's um, yeah. Oh, what's the word? Transient life. Yeah, I just can yeah, be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what piece of advice would you give to anybody to help them get from where they currently are in their life to where they want to be? Um, have a plan. And that doesn't need to feel like a full 30 page business plan. Yeah. It might just be that you know in your head what you want to do. Um, or it might be that you, you journal about it. Or it might be that you actually write down some goals that you want to achieve this year. But having a plan just gives us direction. Mm. Um, There's nothing worse than being directionless, I think. That's, yeah. Well, for me, anyway, it's tough. That's where you get anxiety and, like, these feelings. Introspection, it's like, yeah, all of that. Yeah. know that even if you do have a plan... It's not always going to feel great, um, which is what I'm learning now mm. is, you know, there's going to be some days where you doubt that plan and some days where you go, you know, oh, maybe I should be doing something else. And then you look on Instagram and you like see everyone out free riding in Austria and you're like, oh, I should be out, out in free riding in, in Austria. How do I do that? Yeah. And it's like just stick to your plan. Stick in the lane. And get there. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. Um and last thing to finish up on then, uh, people want to find out more about you. Pretty easy to find you on social media, which we've yeah, talked about a few yeah, yeah. times, Jay Morton. Mm -hmm. um, 
and your website. Uh, tell us a little bit about the charity then. Um, is that you started that? You've you've um, registered a charity. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So we we, we registered registered it as a CIC. Um, so yeah, it's called uh, Freedom Through Adventure. Uh, there's myself and a, a, a local guy, Dave, Dave Hayes, um, who's a, a former prisoner himself, did four years inside. And um, yeah, so essentially what the, the charity does is we, we take young adults that are either going to end up in prison or who've just got out of prison. And we, in its simplest form, take them out for a weekend in the in the hills and throw them in the ocean and go kayaking or love it uh have fires yeah. and um the idea is that we bring some mentors in so um through my network um bring in some ex-special forces guys some mm. you know ex-professional rugby players yeah uh some local businessmen um you know some lecturers some psychologists whoever it is we have these people that are you know potentially doing well in their life who have been through stuff in their life themselves and mm. bring them on for the weekend and um at the minute it looks like we're we're teaming up with a, a local outdoor company london wave so they provide all the the outdoor experiences and the camping and um for one weekend it roughly costs around two thousand five hundred pounds um and that's for six young adults that's everything from you know they don't need to pay for anything mm -hmm. Um, we've got access to, you know, to to to, to people that want to come on this. Um, at the minute, at the minute, it's just fundraising. And, okay. Uh, like I was saying to you at the, the start, um, you know, I'm, I'm getting. I sent a lot, lot of emails out, um, and you don't get anything back, and so I'm probably going to do something where I just go out and try and raise some money because get some attention. Yeah, I th mm. you know, I think when people can start to see that these weekends are running and that we're, we're making a difference and an impact, then they're more likely to invest. I think it's like starting a business, right? If you haven't got a business, then people yeah. are less likely to invest in it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, hopefully we can get one weekend done by April, May. And the idea is to run four four weekends this year. So okay. 10 grand. Yeah, um, that's achievable. Yeah, and then achievable. obviously yep. we want to we wanna invest in some way in, okay, what's the follow-up so um they'll have their social worker that comes comes with them on the weekend um how do we then follow up in six weeks time mm. and find out what impact that weekend had had on them um and ultimately we you know we myself and dave our, our lives changed through adventure in the outdoors so yeah um we're hoping that you know these these young adults kids come out of these inner city places where all they're exposed to is crime and drugs and mm. um you know broken homes and families and stuff and how do we take them into the outdoors and say you know this there's something different and get them out into nature man you know yeah, we great healer you know what do you want to do in life and we, you know we yeah. believe in you and all these things that they've probably never heard in their life before and mm. um love it hopefully long term we can get some people trained as outdoor instructors and yeah well done you. I think yeah. it's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It, and, and always with, with these things, it, it, it's how do you get people's attention and of course. Um, how can they then actually understand what you're trying to achieve? Mm -hmm. um, and emails just, yeah, it's just tough, isn't it? It's a slog. Yeah. It's you, you're yeah. landing on, on a busy person's already busy inbox. Yeah. And I do think, you know, if we can do something, you know, this weekend I was going to go out and just run 100 miles or run and walk 100 miles and I think just something like this and mm. set up a GoFundMe and, I, I mean, wow, if we can hit two and a half grand and run a weekend off in in, in May, April, May, then I'd be a very satisfied man. Yeah. Well, I wish you all the very best. Cheers, um, if I could be of help, which we will go and talk sure about you now. <laughs> <laughs> you usually can. Funnily, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, amazing. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it as always. Thank you for having me on. Thanks for watching this episode of Screw It, Just Do It. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments below this video. Has this episode helped move you closer to where you want to be? All that I ask is that if you enjoyed this episode and that it's moved you closer to getting to where you want to be, that you share this episode so that it helps one other person do just the same. Just ask yourself what small action will move you forward to get you from where you are, then screw it and just do it. 
until next time.